Good evening, everybody. Lovely to see you for our fifth Lent reflection. And tonight we're going to be looking at two stations of the cross. One when Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem on his way to his crucifixion, and the next station, which is when Jesus is crucified. As always, try and use this time to be thoughtful, to listen to what God lays on your heart. This is a time of Lent, and so stop the film if you want to, go back to a little bit earlier on, listen to it again in a couple of days' time, but see how these readings and reflections speak to you, see what God lays on your heart, and take those um, thoughts to him in prayer. This is a time when we reflect on our relationship with God and where we are in the world. So I hope some of the things today are helpful to you. But before we go any further, I just want to welcome Emma. Hi, Emma. Hi, Reverend Steve. Hi, everyone at home. Good evening. Most people know Emma, but not all of you will. So I'm just going to ask Emma to say something about herself. And maybe she might tell you something that you don't know, something different. Right. So Emma, what do you think? Sure. So good evening and hope you're all keeping well. Um, my name is Emma Adonote and I've been um, St. Anselm member for approximately 15 years now. And as you all know, I'm a mother of three. You might say, oh, three. Yes, I lost my middle one. So yes, I've been part of this family and it's a great family to be part of during, um, during before and after COVID. Um, and what don't you know about me? I am a twin. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Emma. <laughs> we, um, so you now know something completely. Is your twin identical? Or? No, we are unidentical. Unidentical. Okay, great. A boy or a girl? A boy. A boy. Yes. Okay, so we know Emma's got a male twin. Lovely. That's right. <laughs> So as we come to our reflection, let's, let's just settle ourselves and hold ourselves in front of the Lord. And we say in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I'll start by praying for us. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Holy, holy God, holy, holy and strong, holy, holy and immortal, immortal have, have mercy upon, upon us. Let's again say this together at home. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Emma will now give us our first reading from Luke's Gospel of them when Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. Luke 23, 27 to 31. A large number of people followed him including women who mourned and willed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the, ch are the childless women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never feeds them. They will say unto the mountain, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Amen. Thank you. I'm going to just say a few words of, of thoughts, really, about this passage. Um, so let's sit and think about it together. So Jesus is reaching the end of his journey. He's exhausted and in pain. His clothes are torn. He looks dishevelled. The crowds around him are closing in. It's noisy and unruly. He is a spectacle, but in a different way to when he arrived in Jerusalem just not many days earlier. What is he thinking? Is he thinking at all? Or is he, or is he just moving on, drawn by the inevitability of what is happening? He comes in and out of consciousness. Then he becomes aware of a group of women on the roadside. They are wailing for him. They know what is happening. 
Jesus could be their brother, their son, their husband. Wailing helps them to cope with what is happening. Jesus could have moved on, but no, he sees that they need tending to. He puts them first, even at this moment of physical and emotional agony. He stops and he talks with them. But his words aren't just cursory, they carry meaning and direction, just like Jesus' words always do. He gives them the gentlest of rebuke. He says, be careful for yourself and for your children. Beware of a time in the future when you will wail for yourself. He then says, strange phrase, but he says, for if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now by this I think he means that if society you're living in now, which was the Roman Empire in its infancy, in its green infancy, was willing to kill an innocent dissenter who gets in its way, Jesus, they just didn't like him, he was a trouble. What will it do in future times when as a tree it is no longer green, but it is a dry, established, a grown tree, a state? So Jesus warns them about a society that will do anything, even kill, to preserve its power and its status. And of course, this question remains pertinent to us today, in many parts of the world, but also perhaps in different ways within our own society. So Emma, I was wondering whether this reading and some of these ideas um, said anything to you at all? Yes, I think looking back, it said, Jesus said to the women, do not will for me. Yeah. So I would, for, in my life, I have had few deaths, as probably you are aware, yeah. people at home. But then the crucifixion is also saying to us, we just need to st be still, and after three days he resurrected, therefore there is hope. Right. That's what this passage tells me. Great. So, so he, he could be saying to these women, you're wailing, but actually, of course, they didn't know what would happen, but we here, sitting here today, we know what did happen. So we're in a much easier position, but we know that he rose. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And um, for me, again, I think it's, uh, that there, there's hope, but it also points to me to um, lots of forms of the discrimination that take place in our society that prop up the status quo. So although we're not like the Roman Empire, there will always be elements in our society which is rather like it. And that sometimes it's easier to find the fault of something lying in a small group than for us all to take responsibility for it. And um, I was just wondering, as I turn my page, <laughs> um, one of the groups that would immediately come to our minds is refugees. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering whether you at home um, have had a sense of anything that Jesus is saying to you. Are you aware of any unfair systems? Does God like, lay those on your heart? The discriminatory attitudes that we might have just hidden away in us that feel quite uncomfortable but are still there. Um, so, have a think about these things. Listen to what God might be saying to you. Yeah. Sometimes God raises uncomfortable thoughts in us. That's right. Um, because we live in a world and somehow we become part of it. Yeah. And of course what Jesus is saying to us is, try and be apart from it, mm -hmm. apart from the world. Try and view it a bit more. And always, I will help you, I will lead you, I will show you what you might do. Mm -hmm. Great. So, Emma and I are going to pray again, and please join in at home. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Again we say, holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Emma will now read our next very brief piece of scripture of when Jesus is crucified. So the reading is from Mark 
15, verse 24. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. Amen. Do you have a favourite piece of clothing? Something that you feel really special in? Or is there a piece of jewellery, perhaps a ring that you would never be parted from? Is there a possession or a photograph that you would grab if you were fleeing from your home, if your home was on fire or something? When we die, as when Christ died, these things are nothing. We leave behind all that has been important to us. So think as you're sitting here, what in your life are you proud of? Your job? Your friendship network? Your intellect? We leave all this behind us. And here at this crucifixion, we see God as Jesus who created everything hanging on a cross totally naked, humiliated, and laughed at. Most of his friends have left him. In the eyes of the soldiers, he has nothing. He is nothing at this moment. Jesus, in this moment, symbolizes the whole human condition. We enter naked with nothing, and we leave naked with nothing our power and achievements become nothing. But we can look through this bleakness with a sense of thanks in that God chose to share our human experience of nothingness. God didn't need to. God knew that we were nothing and will be nothing. And he chose to share that. So that, just hold that in your mind because it's a really quite extraordinary thought. And he did this to show us that this nothingness can be transformed. So as Emma was saying earlier, we have the nothingness, but we know that the nothingness becomes our life in Christ as he was resurrected. Now through this act of self-annihilation, God raises us out of pointlessness to glory. So, this is the hardest station to sit in front of. We know what's coming, but it is important that we do sit with it just for a while. Emma, as you sit here, thinking of Christ's crucifixion, what, what's laid on your heart? Um, I would say it tells us that we are sinners, um, we're not perfect. And I think as human and as a person, we just need to identify when we are fault and then ask for forgiveness. So as he dies on the cross, you just pour your heart out and say, you know, I'm not perfect. I've done things that I know really might upset somebody. And you just learn to forgive and then ask the other person to forgive you as well. Great. So, so almost in that moment of nothingness, as you see Christ as, as nothing, that's the moment when you can really know all of the brokenness in your own life as you see him broken. That's right. um, and of course, it's so important, I want you to think, to acknowledge our brokenness if we're to be healed. That's right. Yeah. So you bring those things to him and ask for his forgiveness. I hope these thoughts um, and what Emma and I have been saying together are useful uh, to you at home. See if you can sit in front of this moment and not rush through it. Um, take time to notice what God lays on your heart. For me, the crucifixion is really quite grounding. It just says to me, stop. Nothing more, just stop. And of course, when we stop, we're more likely to be able to hear God. And when we can sit in this bleakness, for me, the light of Christ beckons to me more strongly as I sit in the darkness. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need the darkness in order to be able to look for the light. As Emma was saying, it's not until you face Christ in his mm -hmm. broken state right. that you can 
have a sense of your own brokenness. So again, this is really important. Stop the film, go back and read the passage again, sit quietly at home and just ask God to lay on your heart what it is that's important at this moment. As Emma was saying, there's something troubling you. You just take it to God as he hangs there in, on the cross in this moment and you say, God, I want to share this with you because I know that you will understand. So we're now drawing towards the end of our time together. So let's pause, gather ourselves as we, as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's been lovely to spend time with you again this evening. Please um, sit up now and we will ask God for his blessing. Lord God, we ask you to be alongside us during this time of Lent. We ask this evening that we may look at you and know the enormous sacrifice you made for us and for that to feed our hearts in faith and thanksgiving. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all tonight and forevermore. Amen. Amen.